Tech. I'm talking about Kings of Leon, not not just Kings of Leon. Kings of Leon releasing their new album last week as a non fungible token, an internet crypto uh, voodoo, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? Yeah. So they uh, actually, I think I saw this in Rolling Stone. They said that you know they're going to be the first band um, in the history of ever to release an album as an NFT. It's their new album, uh, When You See Yourself, which I did listen to. And um, are we giving takes here? On the album? Yeah, do it. Yeah, go ahead. Did, did people come for the takes or the tangents? I don't know which one. Uh, I listened to it. It didn't hit me like Mechanical Bull um, hit me, although that was the case with Walls. Walls came out in, what, 2016? That was a yep. slow grower for me. This has potential, but I, I don't think it's going to be one of my favorite king songs it's got a couple standout tracks i think the artwork was very just freshman graphic design major throw it together in an hour type of thing which i i like the yeah hopefully we'll still get those guys on someday um (laughs) but i don't know i think like mechanical bull had some like soul to it and was it only by the night yep and um you know some of their others like it's a little more thoughtful and uh, I don't know. It, it'll it'll grow on me, but first listen was better than okay, but wasn't great. I'm agreeing with your with your album art take. Yeah. All right, as you were. <laughs> Nate, you listened to it, right? I did. Yeah, I actually. So I checked it out. Uh, you guys were so kind to let me essentially, uh, and everyone to let me uh, unplug. I kind of took a little road trip up north to Big Sur, and uh, this the album dropped during that time. So um, it's actually one of my favorite road trip bands kind of paints the picture perfectly with the scenery. So I think maybe I'm a little biased because I'm, I'm we're both fans to one, but I think I kind of give it some real depth on the trip. Like I'm going to just give it this concentration. It's going to paint the picture for this amazing scenery and to kind of like amplifies the songs. So for that, like I've given it, you know, more stars. Yep. But to your point, like they're so solid, like some of those albums are so solid mechanics bowl in particular, like you said, that I'm not sure where it stacks up yet, but I was impressed nonetheless. But I think I just, it's one of those like singers, like Caleb, like his voice is so strong and the band is so tight that like, I don't really dislike anything they do, but at the same time, maybe it's not as standout as like mechanical bull really is like untouchable. So um, I liked it a lot. Yeah. There's a few tracks that stand out on there. Um, I'll have to listen to it again, but because I gave it that special attention, I was able to fully digest it and I, and I liked it. Yeah. Full disclosure, I couldn't give it that time the last couple of days with uh, what was going on in my world, but I have listened to the singles and I liked the singles. I would be, I'm less of a fan of this band than you two are, I think, but I don't dislike them. So I guess I'm a little more passive in that regard. I do think they're they're talented. They do put out solid, solid albums. There's never like, oh, that's just not good. I don't want to listen to that again. They're not that type of band. They're a band that comes at it with, you know, a cohesive record a lot of times that, that will either grow on you if it's a if it's one of those types, like Walls. I would agree with that. Walls had some, one really good track, I think, at the, 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 the outset. And then I was more into it as I listened to it. And I think, I think that happens with a lot of their records. So like, this could be something that, you know, three months from now, you're like, man, I'm still spinning that. I'm, I'm surprised, but here it is. It's still happening. No, I, I think it will be for me. I, I it, It's funny, Nate, like, on my first listen, I was like, this is not Mechanical Bull. Not in terms of sound, but in terms of like quality of an album. Like you're, again, we've talked about it a million times. You're benchmarking these bands by their best album, which is not, I don't know if it's not fair, but it's like you're doing yourself a disservice because you're automatically dismissing the album. But I will say that track, Claire and Eddie, is the best song on the album. It's near the end and it is, it's a slower song. And I feel like those are the ones I really like the most out of them. Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep spinning it, and I'm sure it'll grow on me, just like just like Walls did. Yeah, and the interesting thing about Kings of Leon too is because they're pretty mainstream, they're pretty popular, but they have the roots um, coming from Nashville and just real musicianship. That I think that's why it gets lost in the shuffle. It's like you know you're aware of them because they're a big name, but you forget that they're actually genuine, like not classically trained, but definitely classically trained in the sense that they kind of grew up playing instruments probably since just childhood. That's a good documentary on them that kind of showcases that. Yeah, there. I think it gets confused because of that. And then you look at the fact that they released this album on NFT. Like they're not really like a technological band. They're like almost like a country band. So there's a lot of like, I don't know. 
disconnection on wait this band is huge but they're country but they're you know but they're putting out like a digital token album like there's a lot of uh there's a lot of ways to get lost in what king's Leon's trying to represent i think so you mentioned nft and that's the the piece of this that i'm really interested in uh, two things yeah. you're right i don't see them as the first band to do this i would have totally picked a hip-hop a solo hip-hop act somebody totally. like drake or one of those mumble rap or future you know what i mean like i could have seen that from the nba culture because nba right now is huge in the nft world at the moment even though it's who knows what's going on there but yeah the for them to be the band doing it that's interesting and obviously that came from somewhere at the label or somebody is saying hey these are hot right now let's let's market the shit out of this and say that we're, we're releasing the first ever nft record which stands for non-fungible token which is essentially you can't hold it in your hand it's a digital thing right it's a cryptocurrency type thing so interesting interesting stuff yeah it's a basically for those that aren't familiar with it it's basically like a, a digital certificate of ownership of a uh, digital asset. So people collect sports cards. That's a physical asset, physical um, collectible. You get art. You get uh, physical artwork. This is basically all that in a digital form, where all the transactions are basically logged through blockchain. You know, if I've lost you, I'm not surprised because it lost me. So. So yeah, I just want to throw this out there. I have this box of of nate's stuff sitting next to me when nate's nerdery that we've done in the past i wish that stuff was an nft right now get this shit out of here bro I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding i'm just kidding i love that shit free storage yeah but an, another thing about the nft is that it's a limited it's, an, it's a limited item right and that there's a certain amount of the nfts that include i think some kind of like lottery to get a four tickets for every tour for the rest of yeah. your life yep. or something like for that them, that's yep. really cool yeah, so each one is, they're all one of one, you know what I mean? Because they all have unique, you know, in quotes, using serial numbers. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's special album package, uh, those live show perks. There were exclusive uh, audio-visual art. So if you're a Kings fanboy, like, this is perfect for you because you'll, you know, I don't know if they'll do the serial number thing, but... It could be, you know, a big win if you're a collector, but also if you're looking for an investment. Do we know how much it cost? No clue. I didn't. I couldn't see anything. find it either. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, if it was, if you're buying it and you have a chance to get into a lottery for all these live shows or live show perks on top of live shows, you would think it probably cost more than your what ten bucks to buy a record. So, or, or even just the digital art piece of it that's going into it. So you're just getting that extra um, ninth grade Photoshop stuff to <laughs> be your own one of one or whatever. That piece of it has to cost more than your regular $10 record, uh, digital record would cost. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to look into that. But I know it's four tickets to every tour for the rest of, you know, the band's legacy or whatever. So that's, you think but about that's that. just the sweepstakes, right? That's not. Not everybody that buys this that you have you're entered if you get the NFT you're entered into that sweepstakes exactly yeah. right yep which is a huge incentive though like you said like investment wise that's one for you and your spouse and an extra set of tickets like I mean you could essentially resell those tickets for whatever I think it said front row tickets bring your kids bring your kids yeah exactly have these gone on sale as of today three eleven I don't know. That's I, a good question. I mean, from an investment perspective, if it's reasonable, I might, I might it try might to buy be one. worth hanging on to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even if even if all you get is the NFT, and then down the road you have the first ever NFT record. So then I can Shit. look at the. Should uh, we pause? Should we pause right now and go buy it? <laughs> Twan's all about investing. I love it. So I can look at the digital version of the freshman um, digital uh, art <laughs> digital art uh, major version of the CD cover. We do we do better job than they do, I think. I'm not going to lie. We could have pulled that off. I could have pulled that cover off. You could have pulled that cover off. It wouldn't have been that hard. Take a picture and put your hand up on the wall. You get the fucking shadow puppets on the wall. Come on, guys. Well, I was thinking, I was looking at the name of the album, When You See Yourself, and I was trying to think of, like, if there's a play on that that I'm just not, there's a deeper meaning to it. And maybe there is, but I I don't know. It, it seems kind of lazy. It's a little convoluted, I think. Yeah. I think we want more depth because the band sounds like they have that depth. So when like the title is not as deep, you're just like, what does that mean? What does walls mean? Right. Is it wall like the wall in Mexico? That one? <laughs> and then the, I hope not. The imagery yeah, there no. was just like their heads 
like in water, submerged in water. I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but it looked like milk. It didn't even look yeah, like milk, water. Yeah, that's something <laughs> funky. I don't know. Back to the NFT piece. If you if you look at it on Apple Music, the uh, the record on Apple Music, the art does change. It's like two pictures of you can see like a drum kit shadow and a person shadow, and then uh, the other two guys. It's just it's it does move, so it does kind of fit with what they're going for here. So that's interesting, I guess. It's funny we're cr- critiquing like we know what we're talking about. I mean, Frank Maddox knows what we're talking about, but we should call him. Yeah, and that is, that think? extends our Frank Maddox streak from Nate to <laughs> thirteen straight episodes. I think. <laughs> yeah, I love that guy. Uh, he's a good dude. I enjoy him too. I mean, it's everywhere, right? There's a tequila now, Deftones tequila that just dropped. Oh yeah, did you horn that in, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I had to. I mean, that logo is just—it keeps showing up everywhere I go. Uh, nah, that's guys, cool. it's the Rolling Stones logo. <laughs> But I think uh, like the, the, the bigger story here is like this is a whole new world mm-hmm. for music, obviously well beyond music, sports, movies, actors, actresses, whatever. Uh, anyone with a, with a following or any franchise, you know, you name it. But in terms of music, like I was thinking about it today, like what would be NFTs that I would be interested in? Like if it was a video, for example, it's like Tim from Rage uh, climbing the stanchion, yeah, you know what I right. mean, at uh, the M- Video Music Awards. Like, what would that go for? And what I want, you know, what I want it. And there are only a thousand of them, right? And <laughs> are we spending that big bucks for those? I don't like who's buying this stuff. People would buy that stuff, though. Absolutely. Like, uh, you say, okay, bands that already do a really good job of recording their live shows, and you know, at least. Uh, the audio, but definitely I'm sure there are plenty that have done video for a while now and we just haven't seen it. That's where this is headed. So Nate's favorite band, Pearl Jam. They've already been kind of doing this in a non not not in the NFT world necessarily, but if you're part of the 10 club, you get a what, a, a single every Christmas on a seven inch every Christmas on vinyl. You get yep. access to a lot of the live soundboard recordings of shows. You can purchase those. Sometimes they come in various, uh, you know, tangible aspects, but they've kind of been doing this on that front. They are perfectly positioned to do this on the NFT front if they have a lot of that stuff. And not everything has been shown to the world, I'm sure. Good call on the live stuff. I mean, any show that I go to that I'm thinking of where they record the show. I don't know if you've been to any of these venues where they record the show and you go into like the lobby to grab a beer and you can still see the show on like a mm-hmm. small little yep. TV screen. I mean, all that stuff doesn't get released. I mean, it's just kind of like in an archive somewhere. It's just money sitting on the table, really. So good good point on the live recordings. Slap a serial number on it, make it digital say. crypto, and boom, sell it to your fans. <sighs> yeah. I was at that show. I want to buy that. When I was at the height of my record collecting, which was 03 to 08 in that time frame, it was all limited seven inches. It was all record released uh, records with, you know, a spray painted, uh, very a spray painted cover, and it was all numbered, you know, and and obviously like all the record store day stuff. So like, actually, record store day is the perfect proof of concept for this. Oh yeah, totally. it's perfect. Like people line up for this shit. Any, I mean, there have been people buying and collecting music things for years, and they've been tangible. Same thing for sports. Same thing for all different kinds of nerdery, right? So, this is only going to, if it works, proliferate there. Like you're going to see, okay, I've, here's a here's the intro to uh, some concert from Deftones. You know, on the the first first show from the first leg of the tour they had a digital camera or an iphone even because those things record like crazy now pointed at chino and he did something crazy and boom i'm gonna sell that moment to a a hardcore deftones fan and a lot of them would buy it if they had the means yeah this is a whole new world like there this is a whole new revenue stream for whoever owns the music so again i i think you know you can Say what you want about Kanye, but his preaching of owning your masters and all that stuff, like, geez, the possibilities are endless, absolutely endless. And I don't know if we're going to get to it yet, but it, this does tie into our next topic that we're going to chat about. Before we get to that, I have something. Oh, yeah. No, we're not. Yeah, we're not done yet. Okay, but, good, good. Yeah. But yeah, this is, I think this is going to be bigger than like even Taylor Swift selling her catalog or someone selling it on her behalf or whatever for $300 million. I, I feel like that's going to be 
peanuts. Like I just looked, Kings of Leon sale, NFT sale earns two million, two million bucks. They generate. Wow. And week. that was just in a week. In a weekend. Damn. Yep. In a weekend, and all that is is the money, the the digital aspect of that album being sent to somebody with a crypto password, a serial number, and a chance to win live tickets to or tickets to live shows. And they made two million in in seven six days, whatever it is. Unbelievable. Yeah. When you compare that to physical goods sales to revenue, because that's pure revenue, right? I take it. Well, I mean, we don't really know. We, when they get to give away the it's tickets, which line. is going to cost them yeah. some money. But yes, it's probably, you know, 75% of that is going back to them. Yeah. Well, even the tickets are essentially comp tickets. So there's no cost there, really, because everyone gets, as we've talked about on here, artist holds. So, man, yeah, that's that's big money. It's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. So uh, the theme of our episode right now, and I just came up with this on the spot as we were doing this. Imagine a year ago. Us talking about Kings of Leon putting out a digital album that they made $2 million on that wasn't through Spotify or anything like that. It's a non-fungible token. Would you even, can you even imagine that? (laughs) No. I mean, there's digital certificates, digital assets. I'd be like, you mean like a stock? Like, what what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. The world has changed a lot in the last 365 days. (laughs) I'll say even in the last week. I mean. It's true. Really, this started in Q1 of this year. I mean, this all this NFTs and digital assets and things like that. It's it's hard for a lot of people to wrap their head around, but there's certain analogies that it kind of sinks in. It's like, well, you know, I use like s- sports cards. It's like, well, you only own a piece of paper. Like, right. You know what I mean? With a couple of etchings on it, maybe to make it more, you know, its own thing. Like if it's got a number on it or if it's got a certain color coded, whatever. That's there's only a certain amount of those. You own one of them. Yeah. And it's not only that, it's like trying to keep that in pristine condition. As you guys both know, as you mentioned, Tony, you're both holding my inventory of uh of nerdery. A lot of that stuff signed. And it's like, man, it's hard to keep that stuff in great condition. It'd be worth a whole lot more if it was an NFT, you know, untouchable basically. So I think this has been a, a futuristic year. It's it's definitely not gonna slow down. And it kind of goes to the point, like anyone that was paying attention to like cryptocurrency like five years ago a bunch of friends that used to like bug me about it like fuck you guys are right shit's happening right now 